Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is by Dr. Finn Games, uh, created by Steve Finn, The Little Flower Shop. This is a drafting game in which you're going to have your own flower shop and you're going to be trying to fill vases and hanging plants as well as fulfilling little orders. In the game, you're simply going to be drafting. You take seven cards, you pick one, put it down, pass all your cards from the side, and then everybody flips them over, places them where they can, and the game continues for three rounds as the cans empty out. Play with the most points at the end is the winner. You want to try and fulfill all the things you possibly can, otherwise it all goes to the trash and you lose points for that. Pretty simple straightforward game with some beautiful artwork it reminds me of herbaceous because why well because he did part of that game so let's go ahead and take you down below and i will show you the little flower shop so here we have the little flower shop by steve finn or dr finn games and everything included for the most part now there's four different player boards every player board has three starting faces you're going to have money to start with as well as a big stack of cards here there's going to be these little registers four of them for each player that you set aside and of course the player board has little areas in which you're going to be placing certain certain things. Uh, to begin the game, it's pretty simple. You're going to start with your player board and place all three of your starting bases down. These are what are going to be required to place in different plants. And of course, set the money aside because you'll be gaining it when you uh, fulfill certain things from the deck here. Uh, the rules also come with the shop distribution, which is going to tell you what cards are in this deck here. And when you're playing the basic game, you're just going to simply take all of the cards and shuffle them up together. So to begin, it's pretty simple. Everybody's going to take seven cards from the deck and uh, we'll just go ahead and draw seven out for this player here. And then we're going to place uh, the rest aside, uh, assuming the other players are playing the game because we're just gonna give you a taste of how it is played. So when it is your turn, when it is a time for drafting, I should say, you're going to look at all the cards in hand and select one of them. After you've selected one of them, you're going to then go ahead and put it face down and pass the cards. There's three rounds of play and it tells you on the top of the board where you're passing during which round. So the first round you're passing this way, so everybody's going to pass their seven cards, uh, or six cards, I should say now, uh, towards the uh, clockwise direction. And then of course, the next player would also pass the cards uh, to this player. And then you're going to take cards uh, and look at the cards again and you're going to, oh sorry, and then after that you're going to go ahead and flip over the card and place it either in your storage or somewhere on your board. If your storage is full it goes to the trash and uh, then you continue the game. Next, The next card is then picked. Uh, you can also choose money as well. And uh, then, of course, the cards are going to be passed around in a circle. And that's the idea, right? You're going to keep passing them around until all the cards have emptied. So you'll start with seven, then it'll go to six and five and four and so on and so forth. Any cards in the register are saved and they can be kept. It doesn't have a requirement of how many you can have there. However, storage has a max of four and after that it goes to the trash. Well, you can place vases down. You can fit six down below, two on these hanging shelves here, and then there's three spots for hanging vase or vases. And uh, that is how it basically works. Now, the deal is, is when you get stuff like flowers, and let's say you don't have a vase for them, you can go ahead and put them in the storage. But if you do, you can simply place them down like this. And that is going to basically score you points at the end of the game. The end of the game, you're gonna score points based on these flower petals if you have both the Voss and the uh, flowers attached. The flowers themselves don't give you any points, but having the combination scores you flower power based on the number of petals down below. So in instance, uh, this one here is two flowers and it's uh, yeah, uh, white here and white is wild, which means any two colors of flower will score you one point at the end of the game, provided they're both there. Um, and, but you cannot do something like this. You can't put two flowers in a single wild. It has to match the number of flowers uh, exactly, just like that. Uh, there are other stuff like these hanging guys here, and you can go ahead and place them here provided you have them enough money. So for instance, there's $2 there. If he had actually one more dollar uh, and he picked this card during the draft, he would flip that up and then he would put that here and discard these. You can go ahead and do this action pretty much whenever you want. And the way you tell the difference between actual normal currency and the ones you get in the deck is the, uh, the wood on the bottom. This just goes over here to this card pile. Uh, and then this is going to be score you points. This has flower power written right there, which is three, and it costs three dollars. Pretty simple, and there's three spaces for them. Uh, these are additional vases that you can go ahead and get and put down, and you're going to be trying to look for the specific flowers that match. After all three rounds are completed, oh, this is a nice one for this, you're going to score points. And I'll just go ahead and make up a handy dandy looking pool here so you get an idea of uh, how points are scored. So we'll have this one in here, and this one there. And, and, and in this instance, this actually would connect to here, but let's go ahead and say it's, it's this one instead. Um, 
and they have this one as well. Because this one could actually have gone in here. Eh, some, something like that. that. That will be what it looks like at the end of the game for some player. Um, you would actually score points based on what's left over here and over here. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve points. Uh, this is going to score you nothing because you don't have flowers that match it. There's no two. And then you don't have any vases for these guys here, including this one here. Now, uh, what's interesting about these things here is they're going to allow you to sell specific flowers and uh, or a vase. Uh, and you can gain money from them. So for instance, if he wanted to, before the game ended, he could go ahead and utilize this guy, or anytime you want, it's basically another free uh, free action you can take, uh, just like these guys here. And if you get rid of two flowers, you can go ahead and gain $4. You get rid of three, you can gain five, then one flower is three. And if you have a connecting vase, you can choose both five and two, four and two, three and two. But uh, you could also ignore the flowers and just sell a, va a, a vase or a vase. Uh, so that is a way you can gain money. So you can go ahead and discard these. This will actually save you from losing points at the end of the game and scoring additional money. If you have uh, $5 in your bank, that's going to score you a point at the end of the game. And for every increment of five, it's going to score you more points. But for whatever is left over, it will go into the trash at the end of the last round. And for each two cards in the trash is minus one point. So in this instance here, you have one point for having $5. And there's four, which is a total of five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen points total, minus one for 12 points. And that would be what this guy can score. However, as you can see, there is a lot of space that can be filled in the game. And let's see if I can get, let's see if I can find some more spaces to show you how, how big this can actually get. Uh, there's another one here. And then this can be, you can fill one more, this guy here. These are all the spots that can be filled as well as of course, you needing to have all the specific flowers in order to, uh, to score. So for instance, in this case here, these guys wouldn't score because there wouldn't be flowers in them, but you could score quite a lot of flower power. It's just going to depend on how you draft in the game. On the first round, you draft all the cards this way, and the second round, you go this way, and then back on the third round, you go this way, simply picking seven cards that have been passing in the long. That's basically the idea of the little flower shop. It feels a little bit like herbaceous, but you're getting a player board, and you're using uh, different types of vases and the hanging ones, as well as uh, putting the flower flowers inside them, and then of course utilizing money and selling different flowers and whatnot. Alright, so let's come up and I'll tell you about it. So hopefully you understood what the game was about due to all of my crazy ramblings, but as you can see it's basically a drafting game. There's three rounds of drafting, you start with seven cards, pick one, pass until there are no cards left, placing cards down into your tableau or your flower shop, doing that three times and scoring points at the end of the game to see who wins. It's simple. It's easy. I may have not made that seem like that during the explanation because I just kept wanting to talk about all the different things in the game because it has a lot going for it. It seems pretty straightforward on the surface, but realistically you're always looking at what cards are in your hand when you want to choose them and how you want to choose them because you're going to need them to come back to you for the most part and other players will also need that to happen as well. Uh, this is a semi-competitive game because you're going to be looking at what other players want, but you're mainly going to be focused on what is on your board and how you can gather as much as you can. Uh, there is hate drafts that you can do if you would like, but for the most part, I noticed myself tending to go towards making sure I wasn't losing points. And due to that, uh, most of the time, every player was very, very, very close in score, and it came down to usually one to maybe two points. And it plays up to four players, so it has that interesting aspect of where you can actually have players... Uh, vying for certain types of, of things, more points on, on the vases or less points, filling up the board, or just making sure they get the exact amount of things that they need, utilizing the sell cards, which can give you money, which at the end of the game can score you points. Uh, it's fun. It's a really enjoyable game, and it does remind me of Herbaceous, but it has its own little in interesting aspects. In fact, I would actually probably say I enjoy this game a little more. Now, maybe that's because it's newer to me and I haven't played Herbaceous in a bit of time, uh, but I do like the fact that it's a little bit larger it shows the shop off. You do feel like you're putting your, your flower shop up for sale uh, with all the different flowers and whatnot. Herbaceous feels more like you're just pulling herbs from the garden and then collecting them. Uh, if you're looking for a little bit more, a little bit more of an advanced version of Herbaceous, this is probably one I would suggest taking a look at. If you want something a little more straightforward to the point, um, get, get her done kind of thing, then I would go with Herbaceous. But they both kind of play at the same amount of time. So, I'm 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 stretched. Uh, this game is my preferred choice of the two currently. Um, 
but I do enjoy them both quite a lot. Uh, if you're interested in a flower game as opposed to an herb game, this would probably be a good choice for you. If you want a little bit more strategy, I'd probably say this one. And if you wanted something that was more straightforward and quicker, uh, they're both right there on the level. As far as the artwork goes, this one has great artwork, has nice player boards, thick cards, thick boards, beautiful uh, back and front. You get a little bit of artwork there. Um, overall, really, really enjoyable game. Uh, I, I, you know how much I like Herbaceous, so this is a definite win in my book. Steve Finn uh, did a great job, or Dr. Finn Games. I'm looking forward to trying out their next game I have up on the tabletop. Definitely do check out Little Flower Shop if it sounds like it'd be interesting to you. It gets my seal of approval.